So some time ago I made a video where we talked about the pros and cons of using external frame backpacks as opposed to internal frame backpacks. And at that time I said that I really liked external frame backpacks for a number of reasons. Now they don't cover all the bases, but they cover most of them for me. One is you can carry a lot of weight on your back with an external frame backpack, and they're usually cooler against my back, especially during the summer months. Now, when I made that video, I had an old backpack that I had picked up at one of our thrift stores and I was trying it out just to see if it would work and what I would need to do to modify it, update it, whatever. Uh, that's what I thought I'd do today, is I would share what I've done to the backpack so far. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, in order to show you all the things that I've done with the frame and the backpack, I'm going to have to do this in a couple of segments. I'll give you some general images of what I've done now, and then I will lower the camera coming close to the backpack so you can get a little bit more detail. So what have I done so far? Let's start with the frame. If you recall, looking back at that old video, and by the way, I will link the older video at the end of this one, and I'll put a link in the video description, because I think it's worthwhile going back and just going over my thoughts on this whole external frame backpack thing. All right, so this is the same, let's see if I can get it up here. This is the same external frame that I used in that original video, but uh, I'll tell you what modifications I made to it. So it had uh, come with a set of straps that were well, they were 60s, 70s vintage. There was no padding to them. Uh, the waist strap was just like literally that, a strap. It wasn't a padded hip belt that was intended to ride on your hips. Uh, it did the job as long as you didn't put too much weight in the backpack. And it had a, a mesh band across the back. And in fact, that's the same mesh band that it had at that day. I didn't see any need to replace that. But what I did do was I went back and found another pack at the thrift store. This one, now this, by the way, this one cost me $7. I think the new one cost me around $15. Uh, I was excited because I thought, okay, everything is here that I need. I can just modify that frame and that backpack and the bag seemed to be in reasonable shape. But the more I looked at it, I realized I'm going to go back to the original frame and I'll explain why. But I could use the straps and the shoulder straps and the hip belt that were on the second backpack. So that's what I've done is I stripped off the shoulder pads and the waist hip belt, because it is a padded hip belt. You'll get a close up of that in a second. And I attached them to this frame. Now, uh, I didn't realize at the time, because I, maybe I was a bit too excited, but some of the straps, the waist strap itself, the belt that would connect it with the uh, Fastex buckle, wasn't a Fastex buckle, it was an old style metal buckle. Anyway, I replaced all of that, and I'll give you some close ups as I said, just to show you what I've done. And uh, yeah, put it on the frame. Now, the other thing that I had mentioned in that original video was that the top of these packs, external frame backpacks, are meant to ride really high. So it distributes the weight higher in line with your spine, more direct over your hips. Uh, if you're on open trails, that's just fine. But if you're bushwhacking or pushing through any woods at all, they tend to get caught and pull you backwards. And you know, you just feel a little top heavy. You don't feel like you're balanced unless again, you're on flat ground or at least on a level path that you can, you know, walk forward and just maybe tilt your hips a little bit forward. Anyway, what did I do? I just cut the top off and uh, that was much easier than I had expected it to be. I took um, five and a half inches off of the top of this. And I'll tell you, if, if you're ever going to do this, don't use a hacksaw. I mean, you can, it'll work. But the easiest thing to do is go to the hardware store and buy an inexpensive pipe cutter. Maybe I'll just throw a picture on the screen of what a pipe cutter looks like just for your, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar. Boy, oh boy, I mean, I put it on the edge of this, measured exactly where I wanted to, marked it, put it on, tightened it up, turned it once, turned, tightened it up a little bit, turned it again, and the top just popped right off. And then I was able to pop out the caps that were on top of the original extensions and a little bit of file work just to clean up the inside of the tube, plop them back on. And, and this looks as if it came from the factory made this way. All right, so that's the frame and the straps, but of real interest is the pack itself. So I'll tell you what it is, but I'm gonna to have to put it down and bring the camera in for more of a close-up. This is an Austrian 
Alice Pack. That's the way it's referred to. It probably has another designation from the Austrian military, but this is referred to as the Austrian Alice Pack. I can give you a little bit of detail about it, but I can't tell you a lo whole lot of history. But I can tell you is it's worked out perfectly for this project. All right, let me lower the camera down and give you some detail. Normally by this time I've completely unloaded my backpack. Well, not completely, whatever it is that I'm going to need to use here at the site. And I decided to leave everything in it, except the camera of course, and uh, so that I could show you what it looks like somewhat full. Now, um, people often ask me, what do I pack out in the run of a day? And I always hesitate to answer that, um, mostly because as a YouTuber, I'm carrying extra gear that I wouldn't be carrying if I was just going out for a day in the woods, such as all the camera gear and usually equipment that I'm carrying along for testings and making videos. So, you know, I might go with a lot less equipment than I would normally if I'm making videos, if I was just going out by myself. But anyway, that's such is the case. So it, I guess what I'm saying is the backpack tends to be overloaded most of the time and explaining what I've got in it is probably not all that relative, but I'll tell you, let's start with the backpack a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna take my jacket off because that's kind of obstructing the view. Had it on for the first part of the hike, but didn't need it after I started to warm up. All right, the two straps, by the way, are just simple straps that I've added. They didn't come with the backpack, and I'll explain in a few minutes. I'd have to dig something out to show you as well about that. I, it's a component of the backpack that I've taken off for this modification. I think it's worth seeing. All right, let's just talk about the backpack for a minute and then I'll show you just how easy, actually I was, I was surprised how easy it was to mount it to the frame because of course that's what you wonder. If you buy one, can you mount it? Well, if you buy this one and you have a frame something like this, so easy, so easy. All right, so the backpack, as I mentioned, is an Austrian Alice pack, and this is available on the Verusta Lika website, and I had been looking at it, and I think they're charging roughly $30 Canadian. Now, they do have a flat rate shipping fee, and lo and behold, Verusta Lika offered to send it to me. They thought it would be fun to see what I could make out of this backpack in terms of attaching it to the frame. So thank you, Verusta Lika, for sending this to me, but uh, you know what? I was going to buy it anyway, and Knowing now how easy it was to add it to the frame, yeah, I would have jumped on this a lot sooner. So if you're looking to do something like this, maybe this will be of some benefit to you. So I'm not gonna give you a whole lot of details on the backpack. I will show you one extra component as I mentioned a minute ago, because I think more important is how I attached it to the frame. But basically, it is just a one big bucket backpack like the Alice is, two side pockets, and one very back pocket that's wider than it is tall. The side pockets are plenty big for Nalgene bottles or, and actually much bigger than that. You can carry quite a bit in each of the side pockets. But otherwise, it's very simple. I will be showing you the inside as well. There are straps that come down over the top and they run through some buckles. I'm gonna give you a close up of these buckles because they're a, me a mechanical buckle that uh, does a good job of holding on to the straps and makes it easy to adjust at the same time. Actually, it's the same buckle all over. Uh, what can I say about this at this time? Uh, I'm finding, just the way that I've loaded it, that although the, these straps are long enough for what I loaded up today, if I wanted to raise this top of the backpack up and shove more gear in it, like a big puffer jacket or something like that, then these may or may not be long enough. So I may end up adding some length to these straps just to give them a little bit more length in, uh, in uh, reaching down to the buckles. But other than that, they're, they're working out just fine. Uh, side pockets, I think this is worthy of note. So. Uh, inside the backpack, I have both a saw and a small axe. And the reason that I have to put them inside the backpack is I couldn't figure out how to attach them securely to the outside of the backpack. And uh, no, my, remember, this is my first time out in the woods with this arrangement. So there's a lot of experimentation and modifications. I mean, a $30 backpack, you don't mind making modifications to it. The pack does come with two loops, one on each side adjustable quite big and I thought yes ideal I can drop an axe or something down inside of there and it will keep it from falling all the way through isn't that wonderful I wonder if I can drop it inside the back of the pocket and the answer is no I can't now I haven't fully explored this concept 
What I can't tell is, yeah, okay. Yeah, unfortunate. All right, I had wondered if it was a full pocket that had been sewn to the outside of the, the bag itself that would have had its own back so that I could open some stitching up across here and in the bottom and then slide something that it would go down behind the pocket. But that's not the case. The pocket itself is sewn right to the side of the bag. Uh, could I make some modifications to that to allow it to allow an axe to go through? Maybe, but I, honestly, I don't know if it's worth the effort to do that. The whole pocket would have to come off and it'd have to have a back put on, then it would have to be sewn back onto the outside. So that's not likely something I'm going to do. These, I still have these straps. I still will be able to figure out a way. I may be able to just have them back here and towards the frame a little bit. Yeah, there's some options there I can work with. So, uh, and that's the same for the large pocket. It is sewn onto the outside of the bag. It's not an individual pocket sewn on afterwards. Um, the material, it's exactly what you expect from Austrian military. Nothing but the finest quality, heavy duty nylon. It is not rubberized on the inside, but I right, the pockets are strangely enough, but the rest of it doesn't appear to be. But I have no doubt that it would at least resist water, if not be waterproof. So that's probably enough about the backpack for now. And like I said, I do have something else I want to show you that came with it. But I want to show you how I attached to the frame, so I'm going to have to set up to show you that. All right, I took a second to open up the bag and grab this strap system that I wanted to share with you, but I also got out my puffy vest that I'm wearing right now. This is that one that I had uh, introduced on a couple of videos ago, the electronically heated uh, vest from FT Vogue. Like I said, I've been trying it out and uh, I just threw it on. When I left the house this morning, it was three degrees Celsius. I mean, not very cold but 99% humidity and foggy. And you know, if you're from the East Coast, how that penetrates into your bones. Anyway, I was fine hiking, but now that I'm sitting down, I had to throw the vest on. All right, back to the video. So what have we got here? This is the shoulder strap system that comes with the Austrian Alice pack, but it's different than just about anything else that I've seen on any other military backpack. This is considered the forerunner of a modular system. Now I'm going to show you the close up of the hooks in a second, just to show you what, how they're used to attach onto the frame. But what makes this different is that it has down here, pull the leaves off, another set of straps. So there's the lower strap that it would attach to the frame of the backpack, but there's another strap here, and what, and same on the other side, of course, and they are intended to be attached to another modular bag, a good size bag that you would attach to the front of this strapping system, and it would be carried just above your waistline. So you would actually help to counterbalance some of the weight of your backpack by pulling it forward with this weight around the front of your waist. You know, what a novel idea. You had a bag that you could uh, put all the things you needed to access quickly and remove from the backpack easily enough if you needed to for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, I thought it's quite a unique system. Now the pack did not come with the second bag. I'm not sure where they could be obtained at. And again, the, the, uh, the focus of this video was not on the history of this backpack itself, but how I used it to modify it and attach it to the frame. So once again, I'm going to give you a close up of these hooks. They're a very strong metal hook and they hook into little tabs on the pack and you can just take them in from the side and hook and they go on, they stay on, they don't fall off. I'm not gonna reattach them to the frame now, but let me show you how that came in handy when it came time to mount it to this frame. All right, these are the tabs. These are the tabs. So there's two tabs, one on each side, and those hooks, the ones on the yoke, would have attached into those tabs right there. So that's how the thing would have attached to the, to the uh, backpack. Uh, and you're saying, okay, well, what else? Well, there is a pocket inside, which I'll show you in a second. There's a pocket inside right against the back of the pack that does have a strap and a buckle. And my uh, assumption is that it was intended for one of those folding ground pads, foam ground pads, so that it could be slid in there, add some rigidity to the back of the pack, as well as to protect your back from anything 
pokey that might be inside of the bag. Uh, I don't have one of those pads. I might look for one just to uh, see how it would work inside of here. But yeah, okay, so that's the basics on the pack. Well, here's what was so cool. The way these old school frames are designed, here are the straps. And you can see there's a long clevis pin with some spacers on it right there. And at the top of the frame across here are two sets of holes so that you can put the shoulder straps either a little bit closer together or a little bit further apart, depending on how you like to wear it. Um, I've just always used it with the holes closest in because it just seemed to bring the back of the straps a little closer around the back of my neck so that the, it just seemed to ride better on my shoulders that way. What that left me was with two holes, just one inch to either side of where those clevis pins have gone through. Gone through. Lo and behold, I'm going to have to bring it up here a little bit. There. The two tabs for this backpack matched up precisely. I mean, I, I couldn't have made it any better. It matched up precisely to those two outside set of holes. All I had to do then was use the right size nut and bolt to go through the frame, which happens to be a number 8 by 32. That's what I'm using, an inch and a half long number eight by 32, a couple of extra washers and a locking washer and a couple of nuts to go with and it's attached and it's not coming off and it's more than strong enough to stay on there. At the other end of the pack I was able to do pretty much exactly the same thing because it would have the same tabs I'm trying to find them here upside down it has the same tabs and all I had to do was to take another set of those straps that I uh, used, the ones with the, the slip, slip lock, and uh, just run it through and attach it to the bottom of the frame. Now here, it's more about keeping the thing from sliding back and forth. It's not weight supporting. It's a matter of making sure the bag stays fully extended and doesn't slide side to side. So it's not weight bearing. In fact, there is a tiny bit of slack in those straps, but that's fine. It's, they're doing the job just as they're intended to do. And that gives me, oh, maybe three or four inches of extension down at the bottom for where I can strap something to the bottom of the pack. And today it was the tripod the camera's sitting on I was able to just run it across here with yet another set of straps. So super, super simple attachment point. Now, if you happen to have an old frame that you're thinking about doing something like this with, and you have a set of shoulder straps and everything else, if you don't have two sets of holes at the top of your frame right up here, then it would be really easy to take the tabs, mark the, mark the points where they touch the top of the frame, and drill holes through. Um, yeah, I can't imagine that, well, I'll tell you, I had all kinds of scenarios in my mind of sewing loops on to the, to the, the straps and hanging them over the top of the poles on either end and things like that. And then when I lined these up and I saw how easy it was going to be, I could not have been happier. It's worked out perfectly. Yeah, so that's the status of my backpack project right now. I don't consider myself finished. I don't know how much more I'm going to do. I have a few ideas I'll share with you. But at this point, it, uh, you know, it's been a very inexpensive project. What, let's put it together, about $30 for the backpack, $7 for the frame, a little bit more than I wanted to pay for the other backpack that had the straps, so about $15. You know, what are we at? We're 15 or a little over $50 for a full backpack that uh, is ideal for bushcraft. I think the Alice pack is around 50 liters. That's my best guess. Now it does have snow collars. Oh, I said I'd show you the inside. Let's see if I can do this. It has the snow collar extensions that allow you to bulk up more things. Yeah. If you can see those two snow collars. Uh, with the drawstrings top and bottom here. So yeah, you can get even more gear in it than I'm carrying in it. Probably go to 60 liters. That would be my best guess. But uh, the way I pack, it'd be 60 heavy liters. So I, I, I'm not going to try and overpack this just to see what I can carry. I tend to overpack anyway, just because for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so this has been a project that has uh, been ongoing. I haven't rushed out to make it complete it. 
and it's still evolving. This Franken pack, if you will, still has a few things that have to be done to it, I think. I'm still looking at how I can make it a bit more comfortable and a bit more versatile in terms of adding things to the outside. Uh, I would love to be able to figure out a nice, safe, secure way to add the axe and the saw to the outside. I'm sure I will. It won't be that difficult to do. But uh, yeah, there are a few things I could do to it yet. Uh, that strapping system, uh, I can, well, again, take a look at the straps and the hooks. There's plenty there to work with if I can figure out ways of using these, attaching them to the frame as ways of uh, further attaching things to the outside of the pack. So don't worry, I won't be throwing this away. Likely we'll be cutting it up. I know some historians, military historians out there are saying, no, don't do that. <laughs> you know, if I could, you know, I'm no, I won't rush to cut this up. I'm sure that, uh, you know, I'm likely going to keep the pack. I mean, it's cheap enough, right? But uh, if I decide I may someday get rid of it, then maybe I should keep these straps to, to put back on it before I sell it. All right, at this point, I think what I'd like to do is get your thoughts on where I'm at with this system right now. Um, am I in the right direction? Do you think I've come up with something that is worth keeping pursuing? Is there something else you would suggest different? Would you try to do this yourself? Like I said, it doesn't get any easier. And if you've got a frame that, that you can use for doing this, uh, mounting the two, then uh, yeah, I, I just can't imagine a simpler project than using these packs. I don't know how available these packs are on Verusalika. Well, they are right now at the time of this video, but how much longer they will be available. But I can tell you it's a quality pack. It doesn't have all the outside strapping things that I think I'd like to have. But again, for the cost of it and what I can do to modify it myself, it was well worth buying. And again, thank you to Verustalika for sending me this pack. All right, without stretching this video along any further, let me know what you think of the project so far, so far what you would do to change it up some. And uh, yeah, put those, all those co comments in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.